Hey, thanks for being with us for AM Baton Rouge. DC Current, a look at what's going on in the nation's capital, and it's brought to you by the LABI, the Guardians of Free Enterprise in Louisiana since 1975. State of the Union address, I thought last night, was um, not a barn burner, but it's certain, it was entertaining. It was engaging. Nobody cares what you think. All right. But well, we I do care what Congressman Mike Johnson yeah, let's, thinks. Let's ask one of the men who was in the room. Congressman Johnson, how are you this morning? Hey, guys. Great to be with you. And I concur. I thought it was a great speech. And I could tell you that's that was the feeling inside the room. It resonated, certainly on our side of the aisle. But I think even among the Democrats and even among some who are not standing to applaud, I think I think they had to acknowledge it was a great speech. It was well written, well delivered. I think it's exactly what the American people needed to hear last night. And I told the president as much on the way out because I was on the aisle and and he nodded and he I think he felt it after the speech. It, it also, it really kept it between the white, white lines. And there is an art to doing a big build-up speech like this and really not giving anybody much that they can disagree with. Would you, would you think that's what, what happened there? I, I, think, I think that's exactly what happened. I think the tone was right. I think the, uh, you know, the hearkening back to the greatness of America and the, the call, the new renewed call to greatness again. I mean, the idea that he brought in Holocaust survivors and people who had been liberated by Americans in World War II, and then had the, you know, the the World War II uh, vets in, in in the in the chamber uh, in the gallery. It was just a, a lot of very touching moments. There were some things he said I think that that had to resonate with anyone who self-identifies as an American citizen or patriot. You know, and and that's what you want. That's what you expect in a State of the Union. And I think he uh, he hit all the high notes. There were things uh, I gotta tell you. I was I was rather upset with some of the Democrats at the things that they refused to stand up for. They refused to stand up for uh, uh, child sex traffickers being arrested at the border. They re- mm. they they refused to stand up for you know children's lives and things like these. These are the things that bothered me. It's like what, what I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm like, where where's your heart, people? Well, I felt exactly the same way, and of course, I was up close and personal. I was I, I was literally on, on the aisle on the Republican side. And so, you know, we're all standing to our feet every, you know, every 60 seconds of the speech. And I look over to, you know, just to my left and, and my colleagues are there. Some of them with their arms folded, uh, some, you know, reading text messages or something. You know, it's just it, it, the, the politics really have become so divisive in this city. And um, and that's part of the problem. And I, and I think that's why the president's call to unity uh, was so timely. I mean, you know, he, he said we should put aside the bitter partisan divide and work not for party but for country and and that's what i think the american people want and expect of the elected representatives here in washington and uh and and by god's grace we'll we'll be able to do that i hope there's some reasonable people on the other side of the aisle who are willing to roll their sleeves up and get to work i think there are i know many of them you know of course personally and uh we're going to be working on that uh mike uh, this is the first day of the union that i can remember in a long time that talked specifically about medical research and a line item in the budget. Uh, quite frankly, I was a little surprised to hear it, uh, uh, talking about childhood cancers and uh, $500 million over the next 10 years. Uh, and uh, this, have you all been informed that that was going to be there? I mean, I think it's a great thing, but it usually that's not one of the things that gets makes it into a State of the Union. Well, that's right. I, I did not know it was going to be in the speech. They don't give us bullet points ahead of time uh, on all the fine points anyway. Um, but, you know, he prefaced that, Bill, by saying this is something that every American should be able to support. And that was one of the few lines in the speech, as you probably noticed, where mm-hmm. everyone stood to their feet. Um, I, it was welcomed news. Uh, it's a, a scourge and something that we need to invest in because it does help everyone. And, and um, so I think I suspect he'll have bipartisan support for that. Maybe it's one of the wins that we can get out of this Congress. Uh, I, I, I know your background as, as a constitutional scholar uh, and as the chair of the uh, Civility Caucus. And, and I, I'm wondering if, if there is anything you would have liked to have heard in the speech last night that wasn't there. You know, I, somebody asked me that last night, uh, Bill, right after the speech, and, and I couldn't come up with anything. I mean, I, look, I felt like it was the speech was really almost Reagan-esque. I just spoke at a breakfast this morning uh, with uh, it's comprised of about 100 of the top conservative policy groups in the country, and, and I told them as much. I said it was almost as if it was written by Peggy Noonan, who was uh, Reagan's speechwriter. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just a – he hit all the high notes. I mean, I love the lines about – 
America will never be a socialist nation. I mean, we. I mean, I stood and cheered like I was at an LSU football game, mm-hmm. guys. I mean, that's that's what he needed to say. He, he we, we hoped he would, and he put it in there. He went there directly on the infanticide and this crazy push towards late term abortion and all this. And he said, "We are we're all made in God's image, the, mm-hmm. whole, the image of a holy God." I've never heard a president say that before in a state of the union. And and you know, we talk about it. And I gave that speech on the House floor last week. But to hear the president say it uh, was just phenomenal. Yeah, so there were a lot I, of look, really gratifying moments during the speech. Well, it really I, was, and, I, and we needed that right now, and I, I think he did a great job. I thought it was interesting. Again, you can't see this because I don't know if there's TV monitors where every member in the chamber can see it. Uh, but right after the, the socialism comment, uh, the, the camera was looking for Bernie, Bernie Sanders. They found him. Bernie had his head in his hands. He was like, what? <laughs> now, I don't know if that was coincidence or not. But uh, it, it was it was just one of the, those moments where the where they found the right shot and, and, and had the right guy in frame. Well, that was perfect. I'm glad they were looking for him with the camera. I was watching uh, Alexandria Casio cortez AOC's face. And, yeah. uh, boy, she had a mean little scowl on her face. Um, By the way, look, if she, she doesn't even, how does she she doesn't even a, understand what, what all that means, I'm convinced. How does so, she afford a um, $1,000 you know. jacket if she's broke? She's always uh, yeah. complaining she's broke. She was dressed in designer clothes last night. She always seems to be, um, you know, that's for her, all of her Twitter followers, I guess. But, um, look, her ideas are madness. It is anathema to who we are as Americans, and I am just so grateful the president hit it straight on. And I don't know if y'all could see from the television broadcast, but he looked directly in her direction and, and pointed his finger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, well, she's a, yeah. she is a, a one-term of two years anomaly. And, and, and the, the thing about it is in a lot of these New York districts, if you embarrass the district, you won't be back. You know, it, it, it's not like some of our districts where you can where you can hang around for a while as long as your policies, you know, are in tune. If you become a, a, a PR liability, you won't be back. I, I think that's true, and I, I hope that's true because her ideas are dangerous. It's not personal. She's a nice, nice person, but um, she thinks like a Marxist, yeah. and we can't have that in the U.S. Congress, period. Uh, there's uh, one point I wanted to ask you about is when he was uh, addressing the wall, where he literally called people out for living behind walls themselves while talking about the immorality of us building one. And I thought that was another powerful moment for the president. It was, and, and another moment where everyone on the Republican side, the side stood and cheered uh, and the other side sat silent. Um, you know, there's, a, there's an incredible level of hypocrisy and kind of a head-in-the-sand approach to border security that the Democrats have taken on. I'm not even sure most of them believe what they're saying. We have on, on record at least 60 Democrats in the House over the last several months who have individually acknowledged in various interviews or, or, or public events that they know that we have a humanitarian crisis. They know we have a national security crisis on the southern border, and yet um, Nancy Pelosi will not let them get out of step uh, with her conference. They do party discipline really well and very severely on that side. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they have to toe this party line. But I'm not even sure most of them believe it. Uh, they, they know that walls work, barriers work. It's obvious. It's common sense. And we've got to get that done for the people. I uh, uh, I think the, the one very, very Churchillian line, I would have, if I'd written the speech, I would have moved it up because it was way after the halfway point. Uh, but I, I do think that everybody, if they didn't take note of this one, should have. When he talked about the troops we have deployed in the Middle East, mm. and he said, great nations do not engage in endless wars. Right. And if, if you take nothing away from the thought of that, I, I, I think that was probably his most, most Churchillian moment last night. That's one we should all remember. I think it was. It resonated in, in the hall, I can tell you for sure. And, and uh, I had my son with me, guys. I brought uh, my 12-year-old uh, son, Jack, with me and uh, as, a, as a real live civics lesson. And uh, he was up in the gallery last night, and that was one of the things that resonated with him. I thought that was kind of neat, you know, as a, as a young, as a student, um, that, that that made a lot of sense to him. And so that, if that's a good indication of how it was received in the country, I think we're headed in the right direction. Well, we, we all move forward from here, uh, no matter what our political leanings and no matter what our personal feelings. This was the annual report, and we move forward from there. Uh, and, and Congressman Mike Johnson, it's always, it's always so nice to have you on with us because uh, you make a really, really great guest, and, uh, and we love hearing what you have to say, and let's, uh, let's not make it so long in between visits. Now, I look forward to the next one, guys. Keep up doing what you're doing. We appreciate mm-hmm. it. And, and Ainsley said, I had to get you off quickly because you have other things to do, so I'm keeping my word to her. Point that out if you would. <laughs> I'll do it. There Thanks, Bill.